Hi, I am Cordelia Rizzo and I speak on behalf of Victoria Rios and myself. We both researched and wrote a Refugees in Town case study for Monterrey, Mexico. For our case study, we performed our research during the summer of 2018 and updated data on migrant caravans from Central America provided by Victoria's fieldwork during 2018-2019. Victoria is completing a PhD in social sciences at Monterey Tech, and I am en route towards doctoral candidacy in performance studies at Northwestern University. I am filming this video from Chicago, where uh, I live now. It needs to be said, it's been a couple of excruciating years for Central American transit migration. A list of structural violences that hinder migratory processes include organized violence in origin countries and in Mexico, routine detentions and deportations both from United States to Mexico and from Mexico to origin countries, um, institutions like the National Institute for Migration and government programs that emerge from the need to protect migrants har routinely harass and protect and do not protect uh, and play a direct role in human rights violations of migrants. In the last decade, the debates around Central American migration to Monterey and its surroundings center the tropes of crises and emergency. In 2014, the unaccompanied children crisis articulated a series of actions in the region that through the Frontera Sur program uh, transformed the country into a vertical border. A vertical border signifies that the logic of detention and deportation acts as a norm and turns transit migration into permanent condition. 2016 saw an increase of asylum requests, hence transit migration was associated to the global humanitarian refugee crisis. The logic of containment, meaning detention and deportation, saw the lack of political will and additional lack of capacity of the Mexican government to warrant the right to international protection to those who fled impoverished and violence Latin territories. Through, though there was enthusiasm for conservative groups from the, uh, in the United States for the construction of a physical wall that would serve as, border, as a border, some walls are already built in the migrant routes. Um, but the main wall is the sum of these already pre-existent perils and the perpetual lack of attention to migrant population that increasingly decide to make Monterey their home. Monterey has become a destiny for Central American migrants. Statistics show that the deportation rate is lower in the city than in the rest of the country. Mexico's rate is to the 92 or 94 percent, and Nuevo Leon shows 67.5 percent of deportees. The city as a destination is attractive also because it offer, offers more and better paid jobs. Given the incentives to build a life there, it seems reasonable to expect more concern and involvement from private sectors to promote fair labor policy and other, uh, the access to other services. Plenty of irregular housing in the periphery of Monterey attests to the rise of the number of requests for refugee status in Mexico and namely in Monterey. There have been efforts in working groups to produce information and promote evidence-based public policy, but challenges to adequately address migration remain such, as a remain such as a lack of coordination amongst different branches of government through the realities of trends and migration have been known for years. Government agencies lack literacy about the context that forces migration in Central America and also show evidence of poor knowledge of existing regulation on migration and the institutions and which institutions offer services at a local level. Though there is a widespread agreement about whether Monterey and its metropolitan area are hospitable, wa no widespread agreement uh, about whether Monterey is hospitable or not, um, the view of the city's hostility increases as we witness testimony of citizens and local institutions that tend to migrants. There are few initiatives working beyond the immediate humanitarian attention and focusing on intercultural perspectives to promote hospitality. Victoria worked on a project in Puentes para la Integración, Bridges for Integration, which established points of contact and empathy between migrants and public servants. Some of these had to do with Monterrey being also a huge destiny for inter internal migration. Much of the 
support of military police especially come from other states inside Mexico, within Mexico. A common practice of the deployment of armed troops. Most troops do not, that go to serve to a certain state do not necessarily come from that state and often they do not. Uh, one of the outcomes of this exercise was to highlight the need to train public servants and police on the wider realities of human mobility through effective encounters with migrants. More recent interviews show that in some COVID amounts to just another obstacle for the myriad of hardships migrants already face. Threats from organized crime um, are often called another stone into the backpack. While some voices are in sync with some of Mexican public opinion who deny the lethality of the virus, um, they also cite the, demand, the desire of the Mexican government or other governments to manipulate. Um, so hence, uh, the COVID-19 worldwide sanitary emergency is definitely also shaping the flows of movement and migration. Considering the country and borders are already militarized and securitized, the pandemic has spurred several courses in the behaviors of human mobility. There are people who seek to return to their origin countries. Imprisoned migrants are liberated to not create a hotspot and for contagion in detention centers. Many more live, just live in the streets. Uh, though the flow of migration to the north has indeed decreased, Ma many who crossed to Mexico started the journey during the pandemic. They even managed to attain jobs and plan to attempt to cross the border again. A very important, one, important network of migrant shelters who provide humanitarian assistance modified their rules. Some of them simply closed and others decided to continue being a service only to those who were in their grounds before the pandemic. Um, in some, the COVID crisis has indeed shaped migration, but as can be witnessed as, as the hardships already exi the already existing hardships are perhaps not a very small feat uh, uh, compared to what uh, COVID is forcing upon migrants. The recent caravans just show how urgent the need for migration reform is and the, perhaps the, the evasion of the, of the lethality of the virus and of the risk the virus poses is a coping strategy just to deal with yet another uh, vicissitude of the migrant path.